Yes. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to Palm Sunday on Palm Sunday on, on, on Holyoke <laughs> on, at St. Paul's in Holyoke. We can just pull those doors open, prop them open so that you can be a part of the gathering, Steve. Um, I just realized I gave away my version of the thing, so this doesn't do me any good at all. Um, Palm Sunday is one of my favorite um, services because it starts in chaos. The original Palm Sunday was not planned. It was not an orchestrated litany or uh, liturgy. It was a gathering of people that all of a sudden realized, wow, something really important is happening. So I invite you to embrace the chaos of this moment. Um, we're at least not gonna be wandering around the neighborhood two or three times trying to all sing together our glory, laud, and honor without accompaniment. Um, mm. But there are some parts here that you are going to need to be responding to in the bulletin. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Wow, we're all together. It really gets nice and loud. <laughs> the holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Just say this, The Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colts, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord peace in heaven, and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. And the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, almighty God, for the act of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palms along the way. Let these branches here be signs of this victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king, and following him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I now invite you to, those close by, take some palms, pass them to others, so that we all have palms. Pass them along. You can take more than one. We can start wiggling them about. Just pass these. Keep passing these around. Does everybody have one? Could someone go down and bring it to those in the in the pews, do you have ones in the pews? We 
We do. Okay. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray, Almighty God, whose dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable to you, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Now, I will acknowledge that this is not the usual time for the sermon in the liturgy. 
but after this we're going to be reading the Passion and I have always found that there's really nothing I can say to add to the reading of the Passion. And it's hard to talk about Palm Sunday after you've read the Passion. So I've chosen to do the sermon at this point, where we're in the Palm Sunday part of the, of the service. We heard in that Gospel reading that some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. And Jesus answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones themselves would shout out. Now, this past Lent, the Episcopal churches in the Springfield area, it's called the Hampton Deanery, one thing I love about the Episcopal Church is that we can use all these obscure sounding but important sounding words, deaneries and rectors and wardens and the like. So the Hampton Deanery offered a Zoom Lenten program based on sermons by our presiding bishop, Michael Curry. If you don't remember, he was the one that preached the, at the wedding of Harry and uh, Meghan and made a huge stir. He is an amazing preacher. And we actually didn't use that sermon. Many people have heard it. We used some others. But the one that just really grabbed me was a sermon that he preached on January 6, 2022. And he preached on January 6 because the year before, in 2021 marked the insurrection that stormed the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. in an attempt to nullify the presidential election results. But January 6th is also a very important Christian holiday, feast day. It's when we remember the wise men bringing the gifts to the baby Jesus. It's the culmination of the Christmas season and marks the indwelling of the light of God in the world. And in so of God's love for the whole world. Bishop Curry titled his sermon, Reclaiming Epiphany. He preached on that day, he preached that on that day, January 6th, a year before, darkness descended on our land, and epiphany was eclipsed. He said we must now reclaim the message and the messenger of epiphany. And we can do this by choosing the light. He also acknowledged that there is a struggle in our land between light shining and the darkness that tries to overcome it. But the thing that especially enraged, and I use that um, deliberately, enraged Bishop Curry, was on that day that the Capitol was breached. As he said, the temple of democracy as was desecrated. Symbols of Christianity Symbols of our faith were used to perpetrate this desecration of the capital as well as perpetuating bigotry and hatred. And then he said, when darkness comes, that is the moment of choice. And we must choose to reclaim Christianity itself. We must choose to reclaim a Christianity is worthy, that is worthy of the name of Jesus the Christ. For the way of Jesus is not about hatred or bigotry or narrow-mindedness or untruth or putting anyone down. He went on to say it's about raising 
everybody up. He said, it's about the Beatitudes. Jesus teaching that blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are the poor, blessed are those who hunger, blessed are those who weep, and blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject you in the name, in your name as evil because of the Son of Man. And Bishop Curry went on to say that Jesus taught us that we can only overcome evil with good. For if it is not of love, it is not about God and cannot claim itself as Christian. Okay, this does have something to do about Palm Sunday and today. It has everything to about Jesus telling those Pharisees to stop his disciples. And Jesus saying, I tell you, if they were silent, even the stones, all creation would shout out. Jesus' glorious entrance into Jerusalem, Jesus riding on a donkey, the well-known symbol of how the king will ride into the capital city, got the crowd incredibly excited. Ecstatic, I would say. They covered the road with their cloaks and with their palm branches. It was more than they could have ever hoped for. The entrance of a king who had set everything right. For them, it was a moment of protest against the Roman occupiers as well as the strictures of the religious authorities. And the Pharisees were right to be alarmed. The Pharisees did care for Jesus a great deal. That's why they had so many arguments. They, but they knew full well the dangerous path that Jesus was on. But Jesus knew he was on the right path. He knew that the stones themselves would shout out, that all creation would shout out, because they were with him. But it is not what the crowd or the Pharisees expected. Jesus was willing to stand up to both the crowds who wanted him to be a political king and to the authorities who were committed to remain in power. Jesus came in, claimed as the king, and then allowed the world to do its very worst and that he would respond in love. He refused to resist and he loved them to the end. The crowd ended up turning on him that week, and they and we shouted out, crucify him. And Jesus continued to love them and to love us. In a few moments, we're going to hear and read the story of Jesus' passion. And as we enter into this holiest of weeks and recount Jesus' suffering, let us never forget that it was an act of love. As we wonder how we might reclaim our faith, how we might find hope for ourselves, for our church, for our nation, for the world, as we try to figure out how to reclaim Epiphany and Christianity itself, let us join with those stones that cry out that the King has come. Let us focus on Jesus' love for all of us and for all creation. And then let us share that love with everyone even our enemies. It is Jesus' love 
that will reclaim January 6 as the epiphany, that will reclaim our hopes for political domination. And yes, I always want political domination. Just set me up as king and me and mine will be fine. But that's not the way of God or the way of Jesus. It is Jesus' love that will reclaim our very lives. So may we all have a blessed Holy Week and a glorious Easter as we rediscover the power of God's love for us and for the world. Amen. And bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. And let us pray, almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ, who, though he was in, form, in the form of God, he did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Here ends the reading. Psalm 31, verses 9 through 16. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach of all my enemies, and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When, when they, they see, see me in the street, the street they, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man out of mind. I, I am, am as useless, useless as, as a broken pot. If I have heard the whisperings of the crowd, fear is all around. They, they put their heads together, together against me. They, they plot, plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I, I have said, you are my, my God. God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant. And in your loving kindness, save me. I invite the congregation to stand as you're able and we'll sing verses one through four of 
in the name of Jesus, hymn number 300 or 435. congregation is invited to be seated. Um, there's a point at it where the congregation will be invited to stand and later on to kneel. The crowd, the, the congregation will also take the part of the crowd in the script. Hear the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table at the, with the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For all I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves, for I tell you, that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined. But woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another, which one of them it could be who would do this? A dispute also arose among them as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. 
Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? It is not the one at, is it not the one at the table? For I am among you as one who serves. You, you are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you just as my Father has conferred on me a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on the thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail, and you when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And Simon Peter said to Jesus, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied me three times that you know me. Jesus said to them, When I sent you out without a purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, No, not a thing. He said to them, But now the one who has a purse must take it, and likewise a bag. And the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, the scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was counted among the lawless. And indeed, what is written about me is being fulfilled. They said, Look, Lord, look, here are two swords. He replied, It is enough. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him, gave him strength. In his anguish he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around saw what was coming, they said, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched his ear and healed it. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with me. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else on seeing him said, You are also one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then about an hour later, still another kept insisting, Surely this man also is with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, 
Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophecy, who is that that struck you? They kept heaping many other insults on him. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together, and they brought him to their council. They said, If you are the Messiah, tell us. Jesus replied, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All of them asked, Are you then the Son of God? He said to them, You say I am. Then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of Jews? He answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for accusations against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee where he began, even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod, with his soldiers, treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this day, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence and have found this man not guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore, therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted together, Away with this, this fellow! Release Barabbas for us! This was a man who had been put in prison for insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again. But they kept shouting, Crucify! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why, what evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently, urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified. And their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that the demand should be granted. He released the men as they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them, were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, 
Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by, watching. But the leader scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, if you are the king of Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. While the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. When Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all, this, all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who, though a member of the council, had not agreed to their plan and action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had been, be had been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned, and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath day they rested according to the commandment.
our prayers of the people. Jesus stretched out his arms of love and embraced human suffering, drawing the peoples of the world into his wounded heart that they might share in his resurrection. With great devotion and gratitude, we lift our voices in prayer, responding, Christ, have mercy. For Christians throughout the world who are imprisoned and persecuted for their belief in Christ, that faith may be their shield, courage a mantle upon their shoulders, and love a lantern to their footsteps. Footsteps, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. That we may pass over from weapons of war to the armaments of peace, food, education, meaningful work, security, water, and health care. We pray especially for Ukraine. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For Justice, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Douglas, our bishop, Tom and Joel, our priests, for Jack, our deacon, that through their words and presence we may be guided faithfully through our Holy Week pilgrimage. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. That we may confess the sovereignty of Christ, sharing his unique expression of love and inviting the unchurched to join in the Paschal Feast. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. That we may prepare ourselves to welcome into the community of faith those who will be baptized this Easter season and to support and affirm those who will be confirmed, received, or who will reaffirm their faith. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Luke's in Lanesboro, the Latino Hispanic Ministries. We pray also for the ecumenical and interreligious dialogue, the Episcopal Peace Fellowship, and the Forward Movement publications. We pray for our Mus Muslim brothers and sisters as they begin Ramadan, their month of fasting and doing good works. We also pray for our Jewish brothers and sisters as they prepare to celebrate Passover that begins Friday night. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For all affected by the coronavirus around the world, for the leaders of the nations, that they may work together for the common good, even as we anticipate the end of the pandemic. May barriers that divide be brought down, that bonds of trust may be strengthened to benefit the entire human family. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For all public servants who with hearts of service stand on the front lines providing care, grant them courage and protection as they put the needs of the community before their own. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We pray for all those affected by worldwide climate change, for those who are leading us to more sustainable ways of living. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints, they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who are in need, especially John, Don, and Sandy, and those who care for them. Lift up all who are brought low, that we may find comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we pray for our search committee. Almighty God, giver of every good gift, help and guide us by the power of the Holy Spirit to seek, discern, and discover that person who will lead our community. We ask that you guide us by your wisdom, 
that we are open to whomever you lead us to. We pray that you guide that person who is searching for us so that when we find one another, we may continue to proclaim the good news of the risen Christ. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Kindly greet each other with the peace of Christ. Peace be with you. God's peace. Peace be with you. God's peace to those who are joining us on Zoom. Peace to all of you. Are you doing the next one? Or? Okay. Well, good morning. Welcome. Please be seated. Um, for our rest of Holy Week, our schedule on Thursday, we're having the Monday Thursday service here in the sanctuary. Um, we are planning to have it on Zoom as well. It will start at 6 p.m. Um, and that's the service where we remember the Last Supper, Jesus wa washing the feet of his disciples, and we end the service with the stripping of the altar. On Good Friday, we are having a Good Friday pageant. Um, we had a group of uh, our kids practiced um, acting out the Stations of the Cross, the, 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 the journey Jesus takes from being condemned by Pilate to his crucifixion and death and, and then burial. Um, and I think it's going to be a very moving service. I invite you to join us for both of those services on Monday, Thursday, and on Good Friday. And then Easter, we'll be having uh, two services. The 8 o'clock will include music. Um, the 10 o'clock will be a joint serve, will include music and a joint service with our um, Spanish congregation. Joel, Reverend Joel will be here with us as well. So I do hope you will join us for that. As for today, part of our preparation is that after the, um, the coffee hour, which you're all welcome to uh, join us for, we're going to be having a cleanup day, cleaning up the grounds as well as a part of the neighborhood around us, and hope that you're able to join us for that as well. And the senior warden, Gina, Gina, says that you need to make come because she's going to be providing me an Easter bonnet. Usually I just try to buy a new fresh collar, but um, I haven't done the traditions here at St. Paul's in the church, and I didn't realize the priest was include, included a new Easter bonnet. Thank, thank you, Madam Warden. And now, I see it. I see it. thank you, yes, there will be an Easter egg hunt. So if you don't, you aren't drawn by the celebration of Easter in liturgy or the priest wearing some kind of bonnet, there will be an Easter egg hunt in the grounds and we are, we are praying for beautiful weather outside. And now let us present ourselves as a living sacrifice to Christ our God. And are we, do, 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 we're hymning, sing, we are singing together, O Sacred Head Sore Wounded, which is in the blue hymnal, number 168.
Our celebration of the Holy Eucharist continues with the great thanksgiving, Eucharistic prayer A, that is found on page 11 in the leaflet or page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. And sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And that the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on, on earth, earth as, as it, it is, is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us keep, keep the feast. feast. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. A word on how we are administering the Eucharist. We are offering the wine as well as the bread. You can choose to receive one or both. Um, the way we're administering is that I have been taking the host with my tweezers, I will dip it in the wine and then place it in your hands. If you don't care to receive the wine, just let me know by a nod or a shake of your head. Or, um, and thank you. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. I'd like to give you one. <laughs> Figure it out someday. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. In the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 
the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Oh, sorry. I messed up my roll. <laughs> sorry. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Does it? The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. of Christ, the bread of heaven. Is she receiving? And may the Lord bless you and the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you this day and forevermore. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Did you want mine? No, okay. Sorry. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. the bread of heaven. That's right. Sorry. <laughs> the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 of Christ, the bread of heaven.
us that was gorgeous. Thank you. Let us join together in saying the praying the post communion prayer, which is on page 13. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most, of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 450, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name.
us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Y demos gracias a Dios.